हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू जेजी के मास्टर क्लास गाइस आफ्टर लॉन्ग गैप हियर इज अ वीडियो ऑन योर डिमांड ऑन कंबाइंड स्पेक्ट्रल प्रॉब्लम एंड सॉल्यूशन बेस्ड ऑन यू वी आई आर एन एम आर एंड मास इट्स गुड टू नो दैट यू आर लाइकिंग माय वीडियोस स्पेशली स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपी वीडियोस आई कैन सी सो मेनी लाइक्स एंड कमेंट्स ऑन द स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपी वीडियोस कीप शेयरिंग कीप वॉचिंग एंड कीप लाइकिंग माई वीडियोज that encourage me and inspire me to make more videos on the topic so do like it and write your suggestions and the topic on which you want me to prepare the video in the comment section so now we'll start with one problem of the previous year msc chemistry based on the combined spectral problem you can see a question here on the screen that did use the structure of the organic compound where the molecular formula is given and you can see the uv data ir nmr where you have proton nmr c13 nmr both data is there along with the mass data so now we'll see the solution first step as we have already recorded we have seen two more videos on the same topic is the calculation of dbe you have to learn this formula of double bond equivalence which tells you the presence of unsaturation in your unknown organic molecule so the formula is 2 plus 2c c for carbon minus h for hydrogen minus x for halogen plus nitrogen divided by 2 oxygen is ignored here so we will put this to find out the unsaturation the molecular formula is given c6h10o2 So here the carbon is six and hydrogen is ten. There is no halogen, no nitrogen. Oxygen is not there in the DBE formula. So we will calculate it, and we found that there is a two equivalence, two uh, unsaturation is present in our unknown molecule. So once we find two, means uh, our molecule is aliphatic, and uh, we cannot have aromatic compound with two unsaturation. Aromatic ring. benzene has three unsaturation minimum three c double bond c so it is aliphatic compound that is sure and now we will take the help of the other spectral data uv data is given where the lambda max is mentioned 200 nanometer which suggests that it could be pi to pi transition ir data is given now we have to interpret all the peaks so for this you should familiar of the frequencies of all the functional groups in ir if you know the charge you can easily find it out t0 52 if you know it is for the sp2 ch stretching so we have sp2 ch stretching means you have c double bond c h present here 2980 and 2876 for the aliphatic ch stretching that is sp3 ch stretching it could be ch2 ch3 One seven two two. We know if you find any peak in the range of seven hundred seventeen hundred, that says it is the confirmation of presence of carbonyl group. So you have a carbonyl stretching here. Carbonyl is one of the functional group, and one six five two sixteen fifty two is the range for C double bond C stretching. If you find any peak in the range of sixteen hundred, C double bond C stretching, and last you have one one eight four. That is the C single bond O stretching. Okay, so you can find all these peaks and two unsaturation is confirmed with IR data only. Three zero five two says you have C double bond C H one unsaturation is present here, which is also getting uh, confirmed by sixteen fifty two, and another DBE is confirmed by carbonyl group. So we have C double bond C H and you have C double bond O as well. now we'll take the help of proton nmr the data is given 7.25 to 6.35 you have a multiplet for 1h and the coupling constant value is given 16.25 hertz so for this also proton nmr you should be familiar of the chemical shift value for the respective protons type of protons and the coupling constant value is for which type of proton or which type of coupling so here we will see one more data 5.84 this is also coming multiplet 1j 1h and j is 16.25 so both the peaks uh, you have the same coupling constant means both are both the protons are coupling with each other and so the two are 
the neighboring protons CH and CH and if you see the 7.25 to 5.84 all this range belongs to either you can notice majority you have alkene protons here in this range above 7 you have aromatic protons but the range is below that 7 to 5 so it is for aliphatic CH proton so we can say that two are aliphatic proton CH double bond CH and uh, what is the position of the two CH you can notice that with the either these two protons are cis to each other or trans to each other so that information the coupling constant value will give you the coupling constant value is you can say here 16.25 that suggests it is the trans protons you have trans coupling for this proton it is around 8 hertz so since it is 16 the two protons are trans to each other so this uh, uh, part of uh, unit of your molecule we have confirmed from proton anima and next you have 3.82 quartet ch2 7 hertz so 2h quartet means uh, the ch2 proton is having a neighboring 3h proton quartet because 3h plus 3 plus 1 is 4 that is quartet and so this is get the 3h proton is getting triplet because of the 2h neighboring proton so that's why you are getting quartet triplet pattern the two are neighboring protons because the coupling constant value is same 7 hertz the two are coupling with each other and so you have ch2 ch3 unit in your organic molecule so quartet is for because of the n plus 1 neighboring number of proton is 3 plus 1 and here 2 plus 1 that is 3 triplet so you have ch2 ch3 in your molecule you can confirm from IR also you have sp3 ch stretching that is ch2 ch3 you have C double bond CH stretching that we have seen. C double bond C stretching also come already came. Now next is you can notice here 1.82 to 1.49 doublet of doublet 3H. So doublet of doublet P hugely you can see here if this 3H is attached to your the CH carbon double bond CH carbon. So you can notice this the, uh, proton which is the geminal proton to CS3 is splitting the neighboring proton as a doublet n plus 1 that is 1 plus 1 as a doublet and similarly the vicinal proton which is again giving the doublet okay so it is doublet of doublet and why we are getting the two proton as a multiplet because the you are having the trans coupling that is doublet and then again you have uh, 3H neighboring 3 plus 1 quartet so doublet of quartet or quartet of doublet for both the trans proton you will get that is multiplet quartet of doublet or doublet of quartet got it so you have here this 3h which is attached to the the ch double bond ch so this information we got it now we will see and take the help of 13c nmr where you can see all the peaks and first we see 167.1 we suggest you have a carbonyl carbon and if you again familiar of all the carbon peaks, uh, chemical shift value and the respective type of carbon, then you can identify what type of carbon, carbonyl carbon is, whether it is acid, ester, aldehyde or ketone. Okay, the next is you have 144, 122.6, that range belongs to the alkene carbon. So you have alkene carbon here, two means two different type of carbons are there here. So you are, here you can see total 6 carbon, so two, 6 different types of carbon are there. The next is 60, 18 and 14 approximately. So it is for sp3 carbon, it may be CH2, it may be CH3. So it is the rough estimation of the type of carbon here. Now the mass spectrum, you can see here molecular ion peak, which is the mass of the organic molecule. You have here base peak, so we will see and assume that if the structure is CSC, CH double bond CH, since there are two oxygen, it may be oxygen connected to the L, its double bond, and you have a carbonyl, then CH2, CSC. If it is the case, you have a molecular ion peak, and after the loss of methyl group, you can see, because loss of methyl group will give you a 99 peak, but again, if you do the alpha cleavage with respect to this, you are not getting the peak which belongs to your this series so if you do the subtraction of 99 minus 14 you are getting here 85 
and 85 we are not having in the list. So the possible structure of uh, the following molecule, it may be wrong. So the other possibility to write down the structure is in this way, where your carbonyl is attached to the uh, alkene C double bond C, and then you have oxygen CH2 CS3. One uh, another point, uh, how to find out whether oxygen or carbonyl is attached to CS2 that you can notice from the uh, chemical shift value. You can notice the chemical shift value of CH2 which is attached to the oxygen will be more de-shielded. Okay, higher value of CH2 will be there for chemical shift compared to the carbonyl. Okay, so if you have that knowledge, you can directly write down the structure. Moreover, the carbonyl frequency for the ester carbonyl which is in conjugation with the double bond will be less as compared to the uh, the separate carbonyl group okay there is no conjugation we know as conjugation increases the frequency of the carbonyl decreases so for the, for the ester group the carbonyl frequency you can notice it is less compared to the standard ester carbonyl so if you do that again we will find and find out the how we are getting all this peak so if you do so 114 minus 99 there is a loss of 15 loss of 15 could be because of the loss of methyl and you are getting 99 peak again if you see the 99 minus 69 and you can see there is a loss of 30 and 30 could be because of the loss of you can notice 30 could be the loss of this is your 15 right CS2, CS3, O. Loss of O, CS2, CS3 will give you the base peak 69. So you can see here, this is the alpha cleavage, which is uh, alpha cleavage with respect to the carbonyl. And you are getting, this is the most prominent peak because it is the most stable carbocation because of the conjugation. And then further, if you do so, the loss of carbonyl minus 28, you are getting 41. So with respect to this structure, we are able to justify all the mass fragmentation. So we can say the possible structure for the uh, for our organic molecule could be this. And you can prove it with all the data you have written so far. So I hope that you understood how to approach the structure of unknown compound with the help of the given data. So all the best for your studies. See you in the next video. Till then.